If you are tired of a two-party system, I'm just going to say it like it is. Same shit, different animal. A donkey or an elephant, a bigger pile of poo or a smaller pile of poo. Mr. Gary Johnson, former governor of Mexico. Thank you. Thank you. So, in this country, I think a homeless person could point out the problems that this country has. I think a homeless person could actually point out the solutions that go along with the problems that we have. But you know what? I don't think you can be a homeless person and run for president of the United States. I think you have to have a resume. And I think I've got that resume. I think there is nothing in my resume to suggest that not only can I do a good job at this job, but that I can do a really good job at this job. I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. I started a one-man handyman business in Albuquerque in 1974 when I was a junior in college and actually grew that business to employ over a thousand people. I sold that business in 1999. Nobody lost their job. They're doing better than ever and it allows me to have a full-time, unpaid job running for President of the United States. I had never been involved in politics prior to running for Governor of New Mexico. I went and I introduced myself to the Republican Party a couple of weeks before I announced. John Latuzio, the uh, chairman of the Republican Party in New Mexico, he said, wow, I like what you've got to say. Uh, I like everything about you. Uh, we're inclusive. We're going to include you in all the debates and all the discussions. You can be a part of this traveling show trying to get the nomination for governor of New Mexico. But you just need to know that you will never win. That it's not possible to come from completely outside of politics and get elected governor uh, in a state that's two to one Democrat. I got elected. I'd like to think... I'd like to think... It was based on what I had to say, which was just let's bring a common sense business approach to state government. Best product, best service, lowest price. Let's not have government in the bedroom. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's believe in the notion that less government is is better. Well, in the uh, in that context, um, I distinguish myself, I think, in a number of ways. But one of the ways in which I distinguish myself is. I did veto 750 bills while I was governor of New Mexico. I had thousands of line item vetoes as governor of New Mexico. I took line item veto to a new art form in New Mexico. It made a difference when it came to billions of dollars worth of spending. Only two of these bills were overridden. So billions of dollars worth of spending and all sorts of legislation that in my opinion were just going to add time and money to our lives wasn't going to make us any safer. None of us were going to be any more healthy as a result of this legislation. Why pass it? I vetoed that kind of legislation. Now, how did that all turn out in New Mexico in a state that was two to one, that is a state that's two to one Democrat? I got elected by a bigger mar re elected by a bigger margin the second time than the first time. Woo! I just. I just think that it speaks volumes to the fact that people really do appreciate good stewardship of tax dollars. Now, in this presidential cycle, there were a couple of polls done and one study done that I think speaks volumes. One of them was they did a poll on the favorability of every single presidential candidate running in their own states. There's only one presidential candidate viewed favorably in his or her own state, and that's me. Now, now, how does that work in New Mexico? Well, in New Mexico, people actually wave at me with all five fingers, not just one. Another, a study that they did, which presidential candidate had the best record, has the best record when it comes to job creation? Well, that was me. And my response to that was the same as it was when I was governor of New Mexico. I didn't create one single job as governor of New Mexico. The private sector creates jobs, but... But I control...
controlled all the agencies. I appointed the heads of all the agencies. I, I appointed all the boards and commissions. I controlled all rules and regulations. And I want to say to you that rules and regulations got better on a daily basis. And they got better from the standpoint of just common sense. Less time and less money to have to comply with government. The last thing that I think is really important is the ACLU came out with a report card last December on all the presidential candidates. ACLU, a group dedicated to the Constitution of the United States, a group dedicated to the first ten amendments of the Constitution of the United States, the Bill of Rights. 24 Liberty Torches was a perfect score. This is important. Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum had zero Liberty Torches out of 24. <laughs> Zero. Newt Gingrich had four Liberty Torches out of 24. President Obama had 16 Liberty Torches out of 24. Ron Paul had 18 Liberty Torches out of 24. But Gary Johnson had 21 Liberty Torches out of 24. So, Right now, I am on the ballot in 47 states and the District of Columbia. There are other, thir and by the way, we are litigated in the other three states. We believe, I believe, that I'm going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. There are other third parties, but no other third party is going to come close to 50 ballot state access. I believe the Green Party is going to be on the ballot in 30 states. And when you talk about the Constitution Party, I believe they're going to be on the ballot on, on, in just about 10 is all. So when I speak of myself and my opponents, I'm talking about Mitt Romney and Barack Obama because Girls. we're going to be the only ones on the ballot in all 50 states. So what are the differences between me and my opponents? I'm the only candidate that does not want to bomb Iran. We bomb Iran, we're going to find ourselves with another hundred million enemies to this country that we wouldn't otherwise have. Let's not forget that the largest demonstration in the world in support of the United States after 9-11 was in Iran. It was in Tehran, where over a million demonstrators showed up in support of the United States. And we're going to bomb Iran? Look. There is not a military threat from Iran. We should be vigilant to what may be a military threat, but if we're going to involve the military in this country, we start off with congressional approval. We start off with congressional approval to do that. I am the only candidate that wants to get out of Afghanistan tomorrow and bring the troops home. Let's stop with these military interventions that have us with hundreds of millions of enemies to this country that but for our military interventions would otherwise not exist. And I have to tell you, the, the, the root of all evil are politicians that are going to save us from the ills of the world and politicians that beat their chests and talk about saving us from the terrorist threat comes as a result of tens of thousands of innocent people in these countries where we militarily intervene. It comes with our men and service women coming back in body bags. It comes with our men and service women coming back with their limbs blown off. Let's stop. Let's stop our military intervention. Woo! I'm the only candidate that believes in marriage equality, that it is a constitutionally guaranteed right on par with civil rights of the 60s. I am the only candidate that wants to end the drug wars. Let's legalize marijuana now. It's on the ballot in Colorado to regulate marijuana like alcohol. Look, I think it's going to pass. I think it's going to be the first of 50 state dominoes that are going to fall in line and bring rational drug policy to this country. How's it going to work? How's it going to work? And let's not forget that six years ago, Colorado, citizens of Denver voted to decriminalize marijuana on a campaign based on marijuana being safer than alcohol. But here's how it's going to work. Here the, here's how the 50 state dominoes are going to work. Colorado's going to pass this and everybody in Phoenix is going to get on an airplane to go to Denver over the weekend to chill out. Believe me, that phenomenon is not going to last long. 
I am the oh, okay, having a president of the United States that vetoes legislation. How does that work? I would have vetoed the Patriot Act. I would have never established the Department of Homeland Security. I would have never established TSA. I'm the only candidate that would not have signed the National Defense Authorization Act allowing for detainment and arrest of U.S. citizens without being charged. This is why we fought wars in this country. I am the only candidate that wants to balance the federal budget now. If we don't balance the federal budget now, we are going to find ourselves in the midst of a monetary collapse. And a monetary collapse, very simply, is when the dollars that we have in our pocket don't buy a thing because of the accompanying inflation that goes along with borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we are spending. And that means taking on the really difficult issues that we face in this country. We all recognize that we are going to have to embark on a process of mutual sacrifice or we're going to find ourselves without a country. I am amazed that Democrats and Republicans right now are talking about who's going to spend more money on Medicare when we have to slash Medicare spending or we're going to find ourselves with no health care for those over 65. I am the only candidate that wants to eliminate income tax, corporate tax, abolish the IRS, and replace all of that with one federal consumption tax. In this case, I'm embracing the fair tax. This country... Crony capitalism is alive and well in this country. Crony capitalism is alive and well in this country. Adopting the fair tax, I think, issues pink slips to half of Washington lobbyists because half of Washington lobbyists are there to buy loopholes. And both, both parties have their hands out to sell those loopholes. Let's make this a level playing field for all of us. I am the only candidate that, if given the opportunity, I would sign legislation abolishing the Federal Reserve. This is, this is an inside game. This is an inside game that has Treasury printing money, Federal Reserve giving that money to the banks at 0%. Are the banks loaning it to you or I? No, they're buying up treasuries in a closed loop. It's an inside game. They're making profits off of all of us. How do you get into that inside game? Well, that's, that's where this country has evolved to. It's who you know. It's not what you're capable of doing. And it's not, it's not the opportunity that this country is supposed to provide. I'm the only candidate that would sign legislation abolishing or repealing legal tender laws and allowing for competing currencies. Strong U.S. dollar as opposed to weak U.S dollar. Talking about my opponents, Mitt Romney and Barack Obama. Mitt Romney says that it's a no-brainer to build a fence across the border. You are listening to someone right now who doesn't have one molecule of brain based on that statement. Don't build a fence across the border. Mitt Romney talks about balancing the federal budget, but he says we need to increase spending for the military and we need to hold Medicare intact. It doesn't add up. We have to slash military spending. We have to take military spending back to 2003 spending levels. The biggest threat to our national security is the fact that we're borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we're spending. Barack Obama, I have to tell you, everything that comes out of that guy's mouth is music. The words are terrific. It's his violin. It's his violin that he plays. It's the, it's the words that come out. And I have to tell you, I don't know how anybody could really take exception to anything it is that he says, but there is a total disconnect between what he says and the reality of his having been president of the United States. He talks about medical marijuana. He promised, and just as an example, he promised that he would not crack down on medical marijuana facilities in states where legislatures or citizens voted to enact uh, those programs. He is cracking down on medical marijuana facilities in Colorado and California. I don't get it. Right now I am on a 40 campus tour, universities, colleges nationwide. Uh, 20 colleges and universities, myself, Judge Jim Gray, my running mate, 20 colleges and universities. The reason, the reason that we're really targeting young people is young people in this country right now are getting screwed. 
I'm going to retire, I'm going to have health care, but you, you all are never going to be able to retire. You're not going to have health care. This is just not acceptable. We're asking you all to go over overseas and risk your life that you should end up coming back in a body bag or with your limbs blown off. President Obama's health care plan right now, it's dependent on healthy people paying insurance, paying insurance premiums to cover those that aren't so healthy. Well, that's young people. That's a burden that falls on young people. And right now, young people are graduating from college with a home mortgage without a home. It's guaranteed student loans that have the price of college tuition so high. Take away government guaranteed student loans, tuition I guarantee you would be much, much, much lower. Wasted vote. How many of you he have heard that if you vote for Gary Johnson, you're going to waste your vote? Bullshit. Wasting Bullshit. your vote is voting for somebody that you don't believe in. The way that we change things in this country is voting for who you believe in. I want to ask you all something. I want to request something of all of you. Please, please, waste your vote vote for Gary Johnson. You know what happens? Gary Johnson's the next president of the United States and I guarantee you, none of you will regret that. We will take on the issues that face this country. We all recognize it. We all recognize that it is mutual sacrifice on all of our parts and that is the key word, mutual sacrifice. Not it's not a country that should be good for some and not good for others. That's what we're fighting for. Thank all of you for your activism. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. The debates of the two-party system are trying to shut him out. We can go to OccupyTheDPC.org. We need to demand that Gary Johnson, Gil Jill Stein, and any other national candidate be allowed to actually participate in the debates. There we go. Right now, I am polling at 6% nationally. Let me ask all of you, how many of you hear my name six times for every time you hear Obama or Romney's name 100 times? Never! Not even close. I think it's more like 5,000 to 1. So that's the good news and the bad news. The good news is, is that when people understand this movement, and by the way, I understand that I am but a spokesperson here. I understand that if given the opportunity, any one of you would take this same opportunity that I've been given. I'm trying to make the most out of this, but this these are issues that have to be heard and that this will make a difference. And when people hear this message, more and more people are supporting it. If I were being reported today just for where I'm at, that 6% would be 9%, would be 16%, would be 28%, I would be the next President of the United States. I have one more question for you, Governor Johnson. So Barack Obama would like to talk a lot about immigration, as well as Mitt Romney. How far is Illinois and Massachusetts from the border? How about the notion uh, that starting out, let's recognize immigration for what it is. It's really a good thing. It's hardworking people that want to come into this country and work. How about the notion that let's make it as easy as possible for someone that wants to come into this country and work to get a work visa. I'm not talking about citizenship. I'm not talking about a green card. But the reason that there's illegal immigration is you can't get a work visa and come into this country and work. Would immigrants stand in line if the line was moving to get a work visa? Absolutely. And then border violence. Everybody wants to address border violence with more guns. Can't we recognize that this is a prohibition phenomenon? Legalize marijuana and arguably 75% of that border violence goes away. And let's not break up families. We have 11 million illegal immigrants in this country. Let's set up a grace period where we can document those 11 million illegal immigrants and let them stay in this country. Uh, look, uh, a, a, visa should a work visa should entail a background check and a social security card so that applicable taxes would get paid. If we adopt the fair tax, taxes will not be an issue because whether you're illegal, legal, a visitor to the United States, or a U.S. citizen, no one is going to avoid paying one federal consumption tax. And you were the only governor.
governor of a border state that has a solution. Just to remind you. Any other words of advice, wisdom? You can buy Gary's book, Good Government, The Seven Principles of. And please, our biggest goal right now is to get Gary into the debates. We have to get a voice. We need a voice for freedom. You guys are standing in the heat. Are you like, you have to be excited for this man. Thank you, Gary. Gary, 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 Gary. And Gary has to catch a flight if anybody would like to buy his book. And we have a few signed copies. There's a few t-shirts signed as well over at the booths. Please feel free to visit the other booths and sit in the shade for a few minutes. We will also be at Monty's on Mill Avenue for Liberty on the Rocks. And later on, there'll be a fundraiser for Mark J. Victor, who is running for U.S. Senate against Jeff Flake and Mr. Carmona.